me again. While I come back, I want to do the follow-up and the finale of this little series. I'm going to put this in a separate playlist. I hope everybody will be able to find it. Um, talking about being targeted. This is all about targeting. It's about mind brainwashing, mind control, manipulation, grooming by a narcissist. All of these adjectives you can look up on narcissism. It's the beginning stages of getting their victim where they want them. This could last a few weeks, a few months, or it could last 20 or 30 years or longer. It could be a lifelong thing if the victim continues to allow themselves to be used and manipulated. But this portion of this story or series or whatever you want to call it is the ending of all that. There has to come a day when... Well, let's, before we jump ahead to that, let's get back to... Let me, let me get back to um, the end of the affair, the end of the relationship. Now, the affair ends at the moment that the narcissist says to you, let's, let's take this a step further. I want us to be more than just friends or lovers, I guess, would be the better word for it. Did I? Oh, I was looking for something. I thought I left it in the store. The affair ends um, as soon as you start the planning of the next step. Uh, when Once you feel like that you've gone from um, just seeing this person as something to feel, feel your needs or to fulfill your happiness, make you feel good or whatever, and, and those few times a week when you might be able to get together with them or a month or whatever it is, um, once it jumps ahead to, um, Let's get together and let's live together and let's start a life together and let's get married. Ask yourselves, think about this for just a minute. How many people have you known that have been in an extramarital affair with someone and ended up leaving their spouse and marrying that person? And now ask yourself the next question. Are they still together? Did they stay together? How long did that relationship last? Are they still together two years later, t ten years later? I've talked about this quite a bit, and I hate to quit, keep harping on my own story, but it's my experience to speak about this from. When things came to an end between me and my ex, and we had, you know, I, I talked about this very recently, that he had started hoovering me again um, the last time he ever hoovered me, and I finally just told him, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't have anything to talk to you about. And it was only probably like six weeks or so later that I found out that he had gotten married. Now keep in mind, he was he was still living with the woman he had left me to go back to. This woman that he left to be with me, and he left me and went straight back to her, he leaves her and marries this new person. And so many times I've sat and asked myself, what if I had said yes? What if I had said, yeah, you know, I want to start this again. I want to be with you again. Let's start it all up again. And I left, and I went to be with him. Would I be the one that married him? Would I be the one that he left her for or would he have just continued this side thing that he you know wanted from me and I wouldn't give it to him and was she in the picture the whole time the new woman I fully believe that she was and so curiosity which we all know kills the cat <laughs> but also we're told as victims and in the healing process, you're told to cut all ties with the narcissist and go no contact. And that means blocking everything 
on social media about them, so you don't know what they're doing. But that's easier said than it is done, because you want to know what is it about her, or what is it about this new guy in, in the narcissist's life, this new person, that I didn't have, or that, um, what is it about them, you know, that, that finally got the narcissist hooked, and the truth of the matter is, is they they were no different than you. They were just more willing. They were just easier. I believe this woman that he married was grade A supply because she was divorced. And now I don't know if that had anything to do with their, their situation, but she was divorced somewhat recently probably two, less than a year from the time that she married this guy, maybe a year and a half. Um, she owned her own home. She had a good job. Her children were almost grown. They were older, like teenagers, but like toward the end of high school years and going into college years, and his was as well. So it, it, he's probably leading her to feel like, well, you know, the kids are going to soon be on their own lives and living their own lives, and we're going to be both be alone. So why don't we be together and just start a new life? That's probably the angle that he used, you know. I fully believe that she was seeing him long before she married him because what I was told by flying monkeys <laughs> who were beneficial to me at that time um, was that he had not been out of the home. Uh, got some kind of a bug. He was not out of the home more than a day or two. He, he, here's the situation that I was told. The woman he was living with came home from work and he was gone and all of his things were gone. And about four or five days later, it's all over social media that he's with this new woman and they're they're posting their pictures together. They're in each other's arms. They're kissing. They're going on a vacation together. They're um and as as much as I'm sitting there looking at it and thinking, Oh my gosh, it was just a few weeks ago he was texting me. And where did this come from? Where did this woman come from? Who you know, where's she been hiding? Can you imagine what that woman must have been thinking when she comes home from work? And she, she couldn't have been too shocked and surprised because it wasn't the first time that he had walked off and left her. You know, he done it when he took up with me and he done it when he before me and I didn't know about those times, but I found out about them later. But he, they're already divorced. It didn't even last two full years, probably not even that long. And they're already divorced. So that tells you what happens when you go into this relationship with a narcissist thinking it's love and it's desire and it's uh, it's your future and it's your your uh, soulmate partner for life. I'm going to start my car up, turn my air conditioner on. And it's not. And at some point, you have to realize that it's not. And you realize you've been manipulated and tricked, and you're left standing there holding the bag. And then, like I said before, everybody's looking at you, and and your kids. You you may you may have had like your children may have sided with the other parent and said, "I don't want anything to do with this person," or in this case this other woman, the kids seem to really have taken to him and, and they really seem to spend time together and then all of a sudden he's gone and the kids that you know are left feeling like he's out of their lives as well, you know. So, so many people get hurt and so many people end up having their lives altered and their routines altered because of this decision to do this. But what I'm trying to explain to people, and I know people are going to say it's just an excuse, it's a cop-out, it's, 
it's a, a easy way to explain an affair but it's really not and um, the, the person who is a victim of a narcissist never seen it coming you can blame them you can pull fingers at them you can call them the bad guy you can um, just like this woman that he married I had I had these harsh feelings toward her for a long time uh, of jealousy in a way I guess even though I wasn't wanting to be with him but I felt like um, I felt inferior you know I felt like well what did she have that I didn't have why was it that he couldn't have worked it out and stuck it out with me? He walked off and left this woman uh, and married this new woman. Why couldn't he have done that? You know, they weren't married. Why couldn't he have done that with me? But he didn't. He went back. And I know now the reason. It's because he was a greedy piece of crap. <laughs> A liar and a cheater and a manipulator and uh, he wanted his cake and eat it too at the time that the two of us were together his child was still very much underage and he would have been uh, responsible for child support and things of that nature and this is what the, the the other woman the mother of his child had told him I'm coming after what I should get and he didn't want to give anything up. He was so used to manipulating her and keeping her under control that he didn't realize that now that he's not with her and he's with someone else, that she's not going to continue allowing him to, to control her. And so, there it was, you know. And so, for myself... What happened was after it all came to an end and I finally was out of and, and I'm not talking about the hoovering stages I'm talking about the, the end of the relationship when I had moved out of his home moved back into my family's home and I was at rock bottom in my life not only financially but emotionally socially people had turned their backs on me I had been called every kind of name under the sun. I had been uh, violently uh, threatened. I had been attacked, had my property attacked, attempted the destruction of my property. Um, I was sick as a dog. My immune system was all but gone because I was so weak from stress and my high blood pressure and just, you know, no sleep and worrying. And it was just like, I was scraping rock bottom. I was less than rock bottom. And I had nobody to turn to. The one person who I could always turn to, who had always been there, my rock and my solid, was the one person that I chose to, um, walk away from to be with this narcissist. Now, I don't want people to get the idea that I was married to this man or anything because I wasn't married to him. And we were not living together at the time that I started this relationship with the narcissist. But I could easily have gone back at any time. And um, I chose not to because I believe the lies of the narcissist. My brain was washed. I was washed, washed. <laughs> and I was manipulated and I was led to believe that I was starting off on this new journey and this new life and I was going to travel and life was just going to be so great. And of course it wasn't. It was all a veil. It was a, it was a smoke and mirrors. And the narcissist walks right straight back into the home with the, this other woman, moves right back, moves her right back in. I, I mean, my my perfume, my body wash, my hairspray was probably still hanging in the air, you know, when she moved back in. And I left behind a lot of my property, and um, 
but that's the destruction fallout of a relationship with a narcissist and they're left they don't have pieces to pick up even if his ex would not have came back and moved back in with him he didn't have any pieces to pick up he had a really good job he, he made really good money and he could have went out and rented any place that he wanted to rent and he could, you know, he was a really nice looking, rugged, blue collar, country boy type. And he could have picked up any woman that he wanted. And he would. And he probably is out there right now with someone's wife. <laughs> or ex-wife at this point, you know. But that's kind of where I guess I will leave this and just say that it's been years now and I've moved on I mean I, I won't say I've moved on there are moments when I still think about him and I wonder what he's up to what he's doing and who he's with and, and things of that nature like you do with any relationship but I don't look for him anymore I don't wonder if I'll run into him again I don't uh, he's moved from my area thank God and his ex has gotten on with her life and the other ex, I guess, is starting to pick up the pieces of her shattered life, and I've picked up the pieces of mine and trying to move on with it, but when I talk about it now, it's in, in a way to kind of educate other people and to kind of bring awareness about it, but just like with any other scammer or manipulator or con, con artist, you can't convince the victim otherwise while they're in it. When it's happening to them, the brainwashing, the manipulation, the grooming, the love bombing is too strong for them to deny. How could this not be real? So trying to convince them, anybody who tried to convince me of his bad nature, I didn't listen to. And I'm not saying that infidelity is okay and that people should give these people a pass or look, uh, turn a blind eye to it. I'm saying before you jump in and, and just call them a whore or a whatever, ask yourself, you know, look at the other, look at the person that they're with. Look at the, the partner that they're cheating with see what kind of person they are you know see if it's just a, a afternoon delight kind of get together and let's you know fulfill some joy here or whatever you might want to call it or or you know hold each other or whatever it might be that you are missing from your life that you think you're getting from this person or is it um manipulation and mind control and being lured and targeted deliberately to bring you down. Your relationships with your family and friends, you may get them back, but they may never be the same again. People may never look at you the same way again. And so, you know, you don't realize you just don't realize what lengths a narcissist goes to. To imagine that someone right now might see you walking down the street and plan a deliberate, deliberately target you and plan something to destroy your life or to make or destroy the people around you or destroy your spouse or partner deliberately for no other reason than that they, they just want to. They don't love you and they don't want a relationship with you. They don't even desire your body. They just want to take because they can. They want to see if they can. And once they realize that they can, then they go all in. They go all in until you're destroyed. So thanks for listening.